environmental DNA, I think, is uh, it, it, it's full of uh, potential, I think, and is really exciting. So basically, using water, either from uh, fresh water or or sea water, they and fil filtering that water. I think for fresh water it was all, only 50, 15 milliliters, so not a lot. They have found traces of uh, different fauna, even uh, otters, I think, so which are, are mobile. They don't stay in a single pond, they move. And I think that's really fascinating. And with a lot of applications in, in monitoring, yeah, as they point out in the paper. Like if you are, you need to monitor an endangered species for of amphibians, for example, that are nowadays uh, so threatened both by climate change and pollution. You can use that technique to to really monitor different uh, ponds or different rivers, and I think that's uh, really nice. And they point out in the paper as well that that they have compared ponds where they have done traditional surveys with really highly skilled scientists or biologists and they compared the results with uh, with their DNA results and even some of the ponds w where the some of the species were not uh, surveyed by the trained and skilled uh, biologists those ponds were when they were surveyed by DNA, they they found the uh, traces of the species. So, yeah, I think it's it's really nice, and um, hopefully they can apply it to see uh, in see animals and algae. Some of them, not uh, not many yet, but yeah, the, I think in Aarhus University they are doing some tagging of porpoises, for example. And yeah, it's still a method that is uh, used a lot in marine uh, fauna. But I think dolphins are relatively difficult to handle and catch. And uh, yeah, for example, it's easy to ta easier to tag a marine turtle with a satellite tag. Like you can put it in the shell, and it's easier. For example, for porpoises, I think in some labs they are still doing a hole through the fin, through the dorsal fin, which can create some uh, ethical uh, issues. Yeah. But yeah, they, in any conference of marine mammals you will see a whole section on uh, tagging and distribution, movements, and site fidelity. Anyway, for marine mammals, when you want to study abundance and uh, distribution, usually you do surveys on boats, but you, you don't tag, you just have observers that uh, identify different species at different distances from the boat. And from that, you can build models of abundance and density. Yeah? I have, uh, have given you a lot of questions and you have yeah. given me a lot of answers. Oh, Thank I you very much. So many of the papers. But there's a, uh, the, in the University of Aarhus, there's a whole uh, team working with marine mammals. Yes. Yeah. Do you know the internet sites uh, called uh, Vela, DK? Uh, nine. But there's the Marine Mammal Association for from UK uh, from it's Denmark. Just an internet uh, for for whale watching uh, beach uh, from the beach, I think, or from the boats and, oh. and, and people interested in, in whales. So they have this uh, internet site site called Vela, which means the whales, yeah. and, and then then DK. I have to check because I haven't seen any whale in Denmark no, yet. It's, it's just like uh, some people who want to uh, uh, like to, to watch birds, yeah. but there are also some people who, who just want to, to watch whales, really. Yeah. And uh, from the, from the beach or from the boat, maybe, but maybe, uh, quite a lot about just from the beach. Mm -hmm. um, so you can try that out. Yeah, I'll try it. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>